Now we are going to connect these devices in parallel. Resistor, coil, capacitor, connected in parallel. How do we get it? Because two ends of the capacitor is connected to end of the coil, to end of the resistor. If both ends are attached to each other, so it's called a parallel connection. So now, in parallel combination, potential difference are equal. Electric currents are different. In series, electric currents are equal, potential difference are different. So we are, we am, we see, and also we of the generator, all are equal to each other. So all R, L, C will have the same potential difference as the generator, V, V, R, V, M, V, C. Because potential difference are equal, this time we are going to define electric currents with the same with respect to potential difference. So one by one, let's remember it. For Pure resistance circuit, I know, electric current is in phase with potential difference. But for pure, pure coil, electric current lags behind. And potential difference is leading, electric current lags behind. I draw electric current, as you see, lagging behind. But for capacitor, electric current is leading. Yeah. So leading, that's why it's going to be in positive power direction. May I meet all the Vs in the same direction because they are? the same in the parallel combinations. Then I'm going to join them all in just one single phaser. Okay, V is common for all. For resistor, pre resistor, IR is in phase with V. For coil, IL is lagging behind. IL lags behind. That's why it's going to be in negative by direction. But for capacitor, I see is leading. That's why I see must be in positive y direction. Now, what is the phase angle difference between I C and I L? I C. Yes, we need to exam question as well. What is phase angle difference between I C and I L? What is phase angle difference between I C and I R? Ninety. Ninety. I R and I L. Ninety. Electric current of the generator is shared by resistor, by coil. Capacitor. Yeah, the sum of IC, IL, IR is going to be equal to I total, but this sum is going to be vector sum. In DC, we add them just numbers, but in DC, we have to add them in vectors because they are vectors. So now let's find them. Uh, we are going to add IC, IL, IR, IC and IR, IL and opposite in directions. We have to subtract them. So I will subtract IC minus IL because IC is a positive phi, IL is negative phi. But there is also IR. IR is perpendicular to this IC minus IL. So I have to use pi to the for calculating total electric current. So pi to the body is what? Square root of the perpendicular legs. And IR squared plus IC minus IL squared is equal to I total squared. That is the equation. In fact, what happened? Potential difference equation changed to uh, the electric current. In series, we wrote this as potential difference in parallel as electric current. That is the only thing difference. This is the first equation for calculating total electric current of a parallel RLC parallel circuit. Second one is about total impedance. I am going to use this equation again. Only instead of I, I will write its equivalent according to Ohm's law. I R V over R. I C V over X. C I L V over X L. I total V over Z. Total impedance. So it's going to be this way. I total V over Z. I R is V over R. I C is V over X C. I L is V over X L. But all these are equal in parallel. If these are the same in parallel, remove them all. So it's going to be 1, 1, 1, 1. This is going to be a question. 1 over z is equal to 1 over r squared plus 1 over xc minus xl. Here, better to change the xc minus xl, okay? Change it in your mind. It doesn't make any difference in calculation, but better to do it like this. And one last equation is needed for. Again, we are going to start on today. 
but the same sides are different. Tangent theta is equal to opposite length of the right angle triangle, which is IC minus IL, divided by adjacent length, which is IR. So theta is equal to tangent inverse, IC minus IL divided by IR. Again, we change to IR. So in series, we subtracted potential differences divided by dr, but now we subtract electric currents divided by ir. We can write again an alternative form for this. Just we will write, we will not make a calculation. Instead of ic, write v over xc. Instead of ir, write v over xl. Instead of ir, write v over r. Simplify these, because all are same. You will get one more equation which calculates theta. 1 over xc minus 1 over xl divided by 1 over r. We don't need this, just one problem we have in this section about this title. Uh, but better to know, maybe they can ask you each other following can calculate theta in parallel combination. So we can get it from this to that. So these are all four equations. Now we are going to apply these equations to a problem, just single problem, no sample problem, no practice problem, no secure rule. One chapter rule question problem we have, which is a mixture. This one. Mixture rule question number 56 in the book. And an AC source of effective value, effective potential difference is given, 50 volts. So the effective is 50 volt, and we know that in parallel combination, potential differences are all equal. Generator is effective potential difference the same as the effective potential difference across the resistor, across the coil, across the capacitor. And I'm going to use this potential difference for all of them. It's connected across a parallel combination of a resistance of 300 ohm. R is given. R is 300. Ohm and inductor of impedance, inductive impedance is XL 600 ohm, XL is 600, and also XC is given capacity of impedance 200 ohm. So XC is 200 ohm. Calculate the following A, B, C, D. A is impedance of the circuit, Z. Find Z. It's asking you find a z. How much? See the question, we know 1 over z. 1 over z is equal to root of 1 over r squared plus 1 over xc minus 1 over xl squared. You will insert the numbers, but you should be very careful while using the calculator in here because it's one word is a little problem. Root of 1 over r is 300. And that is? Yes, a, we are doing a. Plus 1 over xc, 1 over 200. Minus 1 over xl, 1 over 600. We should square this term as well. You are going to get a number close to 4.7 times such point negative 2. I think try it. This is why you can calculate Yeah, this is going to be 4.7 times 10 to the power of negative t. But this is not the answer. Because we calculated now, what was that? We calculated 1 over z. This is 1 over z. So, if 1 over z is calculated, I can calculate z by flipping. If 1 over z is 4.7 times 10 to the power of negative 3, even if there is no written, there is in fact 1, flip it and get z. So then z is going to be 1 over 4.7 times 10 to the power of negative 3. This value is going to be 213, I think. Huh? 213? Yes. Yes. 
So this is the total impedance of the circuit. Yeah, first you will get 100%, then we are going to flip it, and we'll get that. This is A, A part. B is asking you effective value of the current that passes through a resistor, current inductor, and capacitor. Yeah, right? find electric current on resistor, which is IR. Find electric current inductor, which is IL. Find electric current on the capacitor, which is IC. One by one, find them, because we know that in parallel, electric currents are different. I will use also again. I know potential differences, all are equal. Yes, in parallel. Potential differences are equal. So, XL, R, XC, given. So we can apply Ohm's law very easily for B. IR, effective potential difference divided by resistance of the resistor. Effective potential difference is 50. 50 divided by resistance is 300. 50 divided by 300, which is going to be 0.69. Zero point sixteen ampere is the electric current effective value of electric current on the resistor. For coil inductor, VE divided by XL. VE again fifty in parallel, they are equal. XL is six hundred. It's going to be zero point zero eight. Zero point zero eight ampere. And last one is IC, electric current on the capacitor, IC, VE divided by XC, 50 divided by XC is 200, result is 0.25, yes, this is the V part, we found electric current on the resistor, on the inductor, and on the capacitor. Now, in ministry, C part is asked. Calculate the effective current of the circuit, not a total current. Of course, to calculate total current, we should find and do the for B part as well. And without B part, we cannot finish it. So, I am going to so find the total current by two ways. I total is equal to root of IR squared plus I C minus I L squared. I can use this because I calculated in part B. Demo. So let's get I total square root of I R is 0 0.16. I C is 0 0.25 minus I L is 0 0.08. That's square. Result is going to be 0.24, I think, yeah? I total 0.24. This is one method. Second one, as she said, we can use Ohm's law for total dependence. I total is equal to V effective, because in parallel, Potential differences are the same for all. Generated potential difference divided by total opposition of these three devices set. Yeah, 50 divided by how much is that in part A? 213. We will get again 0.24. So, and D part. Angle. Theta is equal to tangent inverse IC minus I have divided by R. So tangent inverse IC is 4.25. IL is 4.08 divided by IR which is 4.16. 
So I think you will get 45 degrees. 47. Oh, 47 degrees. For you. 47 degrees, it's a positive number. In this title, we define potential with electric current with respect to potential difference. So this positive tells you that electric current is leading. Yes. Electric current is leading potential divided by 47 degrees.